What a tournament the World Cup is. And the World Cup 2022 held in Qatar is no different. After a dramatic opening round of fixtures, many teams are in tense positions, with some dark horses hoping to cement their place in the knockout stages. Today, let's review what has happened in the second round of group fixtures. Has any nation already booked its place in the knockouts? Are some of the so-called bigger teams on the verge of being knocked out? Let's find out. Please like and share this video, as it helps greatly. Comment down below with what you think is the best game so far, who you think will get knocked out, and who's been your favorite player at the World Cup. Subscribe and hit that notification bell, so you don't miss the next video. Group A, Qatar vs Senegal. Both teams lost their opening game, and the loser was vulnerable to being knocked out based on the other result in the group. Senegal made their dominance count, and in the 41st minute, Boulay Diop put Senegal in the lead. Qatar would have hoped for a quick response in the second half. However, Senegal doubled their lead in the 48th minute through Famara Diedia. It was all or nothing for the host nation, and they pulled one back, scoring their first goal in the tournament via Mohamed Montari in the 78th minute. There was still time for an equalizer. But, unfortunately, as Qatar pushed forward, Senegal was able to exploit the gaps, and Bamba Dieng sealed Senegal's first victory in this tournament. Qatar is now knocked out of the tournament. Senegal faces a showdown with Ecuador in their final game. Netherlands vs Ecuador The winner of this game would qualify for the knockout stage, but a draw wouldn't be a bad result necessarily either. It seemed apparent early on that the Dutch were going for the win as in the sixth minute Cody Gakpo opened the scoring for the Dutch with his second tournament goal. He's quickly receiving widespread recognition, with many teams seeming interested in his services. It was a close game for much of the first half, with Ecuador's Inner Valencia pushing his team as much as possible. Early in the second half, Inner Valencia registered his third goal of the tournament with an equalizer. Towards the end of the game, it seemed both sides were relatively happy with a draw. The Netherlands will fancy their chances of booking the top spot against Qatar in their final game. Ecuador has to fight for its place in the knockout stages against Senegal. Group B, Wales vs Iran This was a fascinating game from the start, as a draw for either team really did not help their cause for progression. The first half was an extremely tight affair with chances limited, but Iran showed slightly more technical ability. The second was a bit more open, as both teams knew they needed a goal. In the 86th minute, the tie changed as Wayne Hennessy rushed out of his box but, unfortunately for the Welsh, took out the on-rushing Iranian striker, resulting in a red card. To further compound the Welsh heartbreak, a poor clearance from Joe Allen fell to Rausbe Cheshmi on the edge of the box, who rifled it into the back of the net in the sixth minute of added time, sending Iran fans worldwide into a frenzy. As Wales pushed for a quickfire equaliser, they exposed themselves to the counter, and Iran duly obliged. Ramin Rezaelan finished the move in the 11th minute of added time. Iran was in dreamland, and after such a damaging opening game, they really have put themselves back in contention for progression. It's not over for Wales yet, but they would need results in the other game to go their way while they must beat England to progress. Iran faces the USA in their last game. England vs USA After England's impressive win against Iran, fans were hopeful that they would see more entertaining football against strong opposition with the USA. The football vs soccer debate raged online as supporters looked forward to the match. Ultimately, it was a disappointing showing from England, and in truth, the USA had the better of the chances. But neither side could capitalize, and the game finished nil-nil. England face Wales in the last game, who will be looking to top the group. Group C, Poland vs Saudi Arabia After the crazy scenes during Saudi Arabia vs Argentina, the Saudis were in a confident mood going into this game vs Poland. Meanwhile, Poland and Robert Lewandowski were looking for their first win in the World Cup. Saudi Arabia was once again impressive and dominant in this match but couldn't convert their chances. Piotr Zielinski put Poland in front in the 39th minute completely against the run of play. Saudi Arabia tried their best, but unfortunately for them, Lewandowski doubled the Poles' advantage to pick up their first win in the tournament. 
Poland faces the tough task of coming up against Argentina in the final group game to secure their place in the next stage. Saudi Arabia faces Mexico to decide their fate. This group is so close. Argentina vs Mexico After their shock defeat to Saudi Arabia in the first game, Argentina needed a win against Mexico to stay in the tournament. Luckily, they have one of the greatest players of all time in their squad, which always helps. After a tight first half, the ball came to Messi on the edge of the box and he placed it with power into the bottom corner of the net sending Argentinian fans crazy. Mexico did its best, but it wasn't enough. Enzo Fernandez, a substitute, made his mark on the game and scored a beautiful goal in the 87th minute securing the victory. Argentina faces Poland while Saudi Arabia squares off against Mexico. Each nation has it all to play for in the final fixture which makes it really exciting. Group D, Tunisia vs Australia This was quite an entertaining game with both teams getting forward and showing quality. One goal separated the sides which was scored by Mitchell Duke for Australia in the 23rd minute and that was all she wrote. Australia gets their first win in this competition and Tunisia, unfortunately, is on the brink of exit. Australia faces Denmark in what will be a difficult game and Tunisia face France, a tough ask for any team on the planet. France vs Denmark Denmark was a lot of people's dark horses for this tournament and expected them to qualify from the group. A statement win against France would go a long way to booking that place in the next stage. However, France is a heavyweight in international tournaments, and even with a number of injuries to key players, their squad barely notices. Like many games in the World Cup, the first half ended nil-nil. But the game exploded into life with Kylian Mbappe taking matters into his own hands with great link-up play with Theo Hernandez on the left. But Denmark responded quickly through a corner courtesy of Andrea Christensen. As the game was winding down, a crisp cross from Antoine Griezmann was met by Mbappe to secure the three points for France and put Denmark in a precarious position. France has qualified and faces Tunisia who will be fighting with everything they have. Denmark come up against Australia and will be desperate for a win to keep their World Cup dreams alive. Group E, Japan vs Costa Rica after their historic win against Germany, with a win in this game, Japan would go a long way to securing a place in the knockouts. On the other hand, Costa Rica needed a win to stay in the competition. This World Cup has thrown up many surprises, and this was another as Costa Rica took the three points late on against Japan via Kaiser Fuller in the 81st minute, leaving both Japan and Costa Rica on the same number of points. Japan faces a strong Spain squad while Costa Rica will face a wounded German team. Spain vs Germany This was a huge game so early in the tournament, and there was jeopardy too, as if Germany lost, they would likely be out of the tournament. The deadlock was broken in the second half as substitute Alvaro Morata with a typical poacher's goal in the 62nd minute. The Germans responded, and with a substitute of their own, Niklas Fulkrug fired at home in the 83rd minute. Germany had more chances before the end of the game to take all three points but couldn't capitalize. Spain takes on Japan while Germany has a lifeline and faces Costa Rice. It is all to play for in this group. Group F, Belgium vs Morocco According to FIFA rankings, Belgium is the second best team in the world, but you wouldn't think it watching this game. Morocco played brilliantly and were deserving winners taking the lead through a clever free kick via Romain says that caught Belgium goalkeeper Courtois out. In the second minute of injury time, they delivered the final blow through Zakaria Obuklo. Belgium faces a showdown with Croatia to go through while Morocco faces Canada, leaving them in a strong position. Croatia vs Canada Canada played well against Belgium but couldn't get the job done, and they started this game on fire scoring the fastest goal in this year's tournament through Alfonso Davies in the second minute. Unfortunately, that seemed to wake Croatia up and they replied with two quick-fire goals at the end of the first half via Andre Kramaric and Marko Livaja. Canada's misery was further compounded in the second half as Croatia scored twice again through Kramaric again and Lovro Major. Canada is now out of the competition while Croatia picked up their first win. Croatia vs Belgium is a mouth-watering tie and it's likely that one of them will be knocked out. Canada will play their final game against Morocco who will need a win to progress. 
Group G, Cameroon vs Serbia. This game was an absolute classic. It had everything, and most importantly had fans on the edge of their seats. Cameroon took the lead with Jean Charles Castelletto, but Serbia replied twice in added time of the first half as Pavlovic scored in the first minute of added time and Serge Milinkovic Savic scored in the third minute of added time. Aleksandar Mitrovic opened his account in the 53rd minute putting Serbia 3-1 up on the day. Cameroon was not going to let that happen though as substitute Vincent Abubakar changed the game by scoring in the 63rd minute and then assisting Eric Chupomoting in the 66th minute to make it 3. There wasn't a winner, and it would have been heartbreaking if either team lost after that point. Unfortunately, a draw didn't really help either team's cause to stay in the competition and it will be a tense final day with Cameroon facing Brazil and Serbia playing Switzerland. Brazil vs Switzerland a much tighter game compared to the earlier game. Brazil seemed to turn the tempo up in the second half and got their reward with a fine goal from Casemiro coming late on in the 83rd minute to give the Brazilians a deserved win. Brazil has now qualified and faces Cameroon who will be up for the fight while Switzerland will hope they can put up a good performance against Serbia with everything to play for, for the second qualification spot. Group H, South Korea vs Ghana Another classic was provided in this year's World Cup when these two faced each other. This is why we love the World Cup. South Korea was dominant early on, but a smart free-kick routine gave Ghana the lead through Mohamed Salisu in the 24th minute. One of Ghana's stars Mohamed Kudus doubled the Ghanaian's lead in the 34th minute, breaking South Korea's hearts. But they have a never-say-die attitude and replied in the second half with two quick goals thanks to Cho Gyusung in the 58th and 61st minutes. The fans in the stadium and in South Korea, I'm sure, went crazy. There is heartbreak for one team, however, and it was South Korea. Mohamed Kudus again came up clutch for Ghana in the 68th minute to record a famous victory for his nation. Unfortunately, this put South Korea on the brink of exit and coming up against dominant Portugal in the next game while Ghana faces Uruguay. Portugal vs Uruguay Personally, I was really looking forward to this match. Portugal played some fantastic stuff in the first half but Uruguay had the best chance but couldn't convert it. In the 54th minute, Bruno Fernandes put in a cross for Cristiano Ronaldo and the ball went in. It's a contentious point as the goal was awarded to Bruno after it was deemed Ronaldo didn't touch the ball. I'm sure Cristiano will say otherwise. Uruguay tried but was underwhelming and didn't really look like they could create anything. In the 93rd minute, Portugal was awarded a penalty, which I'm sure Uruguay fans will say was harsh but Bruno Fernandes stepped up and slotted it away calmly. Portugal is now qualified for the next round and will face South Korea in their final group game. Uruguay has a huge game against Ghana with the winner qualifying. Once again, all to play for. Thanks for watching the video, put in the comments which game you are most looking forward to in the next round.